Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Numful. Uh, let me greet the Deputy President, both of the ANC and of the country, Comrade Paul, and greet the Pahat family, Comrade Mo, Amina, Govan, Aziz, and the entire Pahat family and the grandchildren. The president, I don't also believe in saying former president. Once a president, always a president. <laughs> president Tabumbegi and Sisanele, and the entire leadership of the ANC, the officials, Numvula, Gwen, and others that I may not see, and the NEC, both of the ANC and the Alliance, the provincial leadership, the provincial government also, chair and premier all in one, <laughs> uh, MECs, mayors, and all of us who have come here to bid farewell to Comrade Pahat. On behalf of the African National Congress, it's my distinguished honor and privilege to extend our sincere condolences to the family, but to the country and the continent and all those who knew Pahat across the globe. That this loss of this committed revolutionary and caring internationalist is very sad, but we understand it is the cycle of life. But to be honest, I never thought I could speak at the funeral of Comrade Aziz because he was my mentor. He was much bigger. It's, it's so sorry. But, <laughs> Comrade Isop, because both of them, for me, are towering. They mentored us. I never thought I would be asked to speak. But what can you say? When you are asked, you don't refuse. Numfula there. In Comrade Isop, we bid farewell to a former Secretary General of the Transvaal Indian Youth Congress Executive Committee. From 1958 to 64, we bid farewell to a selfless and daring volunteer that risked everything when producing and distributing pamphlets to mobilize communities behind the then banned African National Congress. Dr. Pahad, we bid farewell to a vibrant student activist of the 60s at universities such as VETS and other universities abroad. We bid farewell to a banned and exiled revolutionary who led the ANC and the SACP structures in exile. We are bidding farewell to a leader of the regional command of the ANC Political and Military Council. But let me just share a few anecdotes. Comrade Isop, you got what you see. He spoke his mind. Uh, if he had to be rough with you, he was rough. You knew exactly where you stand with Comrade Isop. But there are other aspects that people don't know about him. They know him as a revolutionary. They know him as a family member. But he was also kind-hearted. I'll share you, with you an anecdote. I first met Comrade Isop in 1976, just as I left the country. He's amongst the first people I met. First I met him in Addis, when the AU had a solidarity summit for the Soweto uprising. But then I was 
sent to Prague, where he was based. And when I got there, Meg is laughing because she knows the story. It was freezing cold, and I had come from a very warm climb. And when I asked from the ANC, what am I going to wear? There's no one deep there. They said, no, Meg and Isop will sort you out. When I get there, Meg is not there. She's in London. So I'm thinking, you. So I'm feeling very cold. So Aziz, sorry man, who Aziz, I worked with him so closely. He's on my lips. It's not that I'm old. It's because I worked with him so closely. So please. So, so Isop comes and finds me really cold. And he's, he, he starts shouting at the organizers. How can, don't you see she's cold? Don't you know she comes from Africa? Where there is no snow. And he gives them a tongue lash. And after that, they put me in a car to go and buy warm clothes. <laughs> That's Isop. He cares. If there was time, I could share more. But he was very kind-hearted and caring. Yes, he was rough with you when he had to be, but he was very caring. Let me also say that we remember Comrade Isop as a dedicated Frank Kader of the movement who did not miss the opportunity to speak out. But he also created the environment where everybody can speak out. It wasn't like he only can speak out. And Comrade Isop, one of the longest serving members of the National Executive of the ANC, Central Committee of the Party, in Comrade Isop, I want to say this. The young of our country have an exemplary revolutionary from whose life story they should draw critical lessons for the times ahead. First, Isop left the country, MKO combatant, and was selfless. He was a selfless patriot. And he put the country first, not himself first. And that's a lesson we must learn because that's a lesson that is beginning to elude us. Secondly, Dr. Pahat comes from that golden generation of African National Congress and Alliance who placed loyalty to revolutionary ideas at the forefront of building the broader consensus and ideas as a guide to action. Uh, Comrade Isop, at the dawn of democracy, they banned SACP in young people in this country only existed in their imagination because a lot of them grew up when the Communist Party was banned. But when Comrade Isop and his comrades came back, we knew what, they knew what it meant. He comes from a generation that gave priority to quality and not so much quantity of membership. Yes, we need quantity, but we need quality membership. And that generation placed a lot of premium on quality leadership. We learn from Isop and his collective that the success of an idea must first and foremost depend on its strength and not on the near number of people who support it. From this generation, we learn that internal party democracy is as important and is as good as its form and content. It is the quality and strength of ideas that come out of the SACP underground political machinery, not the size of its membership, 
that entrenched the party's influence in the entire anti-apartheid movement. Thirdly, consistent throughout this tumultuous history has been the fact that the unity of the alliance is much more than a semantic exercise. Whilst on paper we appear a separate organization, a deeper and historic introspection clearly shows that even though we were a separate organization, we acted as one. And that bond between the ANC and the SACP and COSAT must be jealously guarded at all material times. Drawing the inspiration from Chromate Isop's generation and the collective that carried us to this point, it is time for the movement to reimagine a kind of society that serves the majority of those in the margins defend the principles of solidarity, collectively and re- collectivity and redistributed justice. To conclude with the words from Alfredo, such article titled From COVID-19 to the End of Neoliberalism, I quote, The COVID pandemic happened by chance, but it was not unexpected. Its consequences are much more than scandalous. They are criminal. And the left must say this loudly and clearly. Neoliberal capitalism has been exposed for its inhumanity and criminality. And COVID-19 has shown that there can be no healthy policy without no health policy and no healthy communities without solidarity, industrial policy, and state capacity. This is a desperate fight. We must come out of this crisis with a better society. The left is needed like never before, and it must rise up to the challenge. Is the left rising up to the challenge? I don't know. Comrade Isop will now join the galaxy of our heroes and heroines, uh, who, in my view, will be waiting eagerly for the report about the African National Congress and the alliance as a whole. And they'll be wanting to know how are we doing with the project of ensuring that nobody goes to bed hungry, with lifting people out of poverty, unemployment, homelessness, hopelessness. A report on the extent and the seriousness with which we are responding to the challenges and horrors of gender-based violence and femicide and crime in general. These are just a few things that he would have to report to, to our heroes and heroines. May the soul of Comrade Isop rest in peace and rise in glory. May his family be comforted by the revolutionary life he led a true revolutionary that cared for us all. Hambagase isop, hambagase mkondo. Wilwile impi entre. Uslwele sonke. Uhambagase. He would be saying, hey wena, utini?